Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today we are going to be using some products from the brand new July 2022 Pink Fresh release. I am using the Pomegranates and Pears uh, Washi, which also has stamps, dyes, stencils per usual. And then the Dainty Plaid, which is a uh, red rubber stamp. Um, that also has a stencil and I think is beautiful. Um, so here what I'm doing is I, whenever the washies come out, this is real talk, whenever the washies come out, I love them so much and it drives me to want to watercolor the images because the washies are typically watercolored. However, I didn't have that kind of time. I didn't have that kind of time this time around. So I'm going to fake it a little bit. So here you can see on my back, I've already done one that didn't work out and I'm too cheap to get a new piece of watercolor cardstock because it's expensive. So I just flipped it over and nobody will be any of the wiser, except for you all fine folks who watch this video. So basically what I did was on my craft mat, I just smushed down some distress inks. I kept the blues and greens at the tops and the yellow and lighter greens more to the bottom. Um, you can make it as concentrated as you like. I spray mine down with a healthy amount of water as I wanted a watercolor wash look of a background, but I didn't want a lot of um, variation or speckles, not a ton. I wanted really just kind of the wash of the colors in the background. I'm going to dry this and you can do this as many times as you like, build up as many layers as you want. Um, I did two um, just to kind of intensify the yellows and the blues because um, it got really green there. It got really, really green and they are pears, but I want a little bit of color variation. And um, so I'm just going to dry it in between until I am happy with it. If you have any parts that are extra wet that you're like, I'm not really loving that, um, just blot it off with a paper towel. It will leave kind of a bleached spot if you wait too long. Like you'll see when I did mine, most of the background is dry and just those three little droplets are wet. So when I blot them off, they kind of create little bleach spots, but I'm, I was fine with it because I knew I was going to be coloring over top of it. Now, you may be asking yourself, Kelly, if you were going to be coloring over top of it, why are you doing this? And I'm going to tell you, because honestly, what else is a YouTube video tutorial for, if not to tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing? Let's talk about the stamping real quick. So these washi um, stamp sets are a little bit longer. And I just have a, uh, the original Misty, the traditional size Misty. I'm going to, I pulled the foam tape out or the foam tape, the foam piece, the insert out, because I want to make sure that I'm going to get good, even stamping. And so I've taped my watercolor cardstock to the foam piece uh, to hold it in place so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to stamp on top of that. So it's going to give me a nice flexible stamping surface. Um, that's going to make sure that I get a good image. Now, I'm going to tell you that I made an error. And I'm open about my errors. You guys know that if you've watched my channel before. So here I'm stamping it down and the image is fairly good, but it's watercolor cardstock. So it's not great. And I was looking for great. I should have settled with good. I didn't, but that's okay because mistakes are made and then I learn how to fix them and then I tell it to you. And so maybe when you're doing your card making, you don't get frustrated because you already know how to fix it. So what I did is I tried to go back in and do a second impression. With that, I did get a little bit of double stamping with the top pairs and the left pomegranates. Got a little bit of double stamping. Wasn't 100% happy with it but I'm going to fix it. I'm not stamping it again. That's just where I was at in life. So I've selected a bunch of greens um, and I purposely with pears, okay, or with green objects, like the pear tree leaves are green and then the pears are green and you don't want your coloring to look one note. Um, and so there's a, a trick to getting the differentiation. We're going to talk about that in a minute because I want to talk to you about the coloring of this pair. So I tell you guys all the time, shading belongs where two objects overlay or where two objects meet each other. So these uh, leaves are on top of this pair. So that's going to be dark. But the line I'm adding in the middle, you may be asking yourself, nothing's meeting there and nothing's laying on top of each other. Kelly, why are you adding that shading? And I am adding that shading to give my pair a little bit more shape. 
you guys know, pears in real life, have, they're a little bit wonky. They're a little bit bulbous on the bottom. And in order to kind of just play up that shape that isn't necessarily there in the stamp, I just added that little bit of shading and you can see that it changes the shape enough that it looks a little bit more realistic. Here with this pair, I wanted to show you, so you guys know if you watch my videos, my light source is always in my top right hand corner. So my um, shadows are to the bottom left and my highlights are to the top right. With this one, it is a little bit darker, but it's because it's behind so many things. Pairs, depending upon what variety, we're a Bartlett in our house, we're a Bartlett pair people in our house, they sometimes do have a little bit of red or orange in them. If you want to recreate that, you can do so and make it more prevalent by adding it after your green shading and then just blending it back out. So I picked a yellow orange, that's important, um, because I knew that it would play well with my yellow greens. And then I picked a lighter red and I just put in a couple of dots of color and then blended it with the the first one blended it back out with my YG01. For this other one here that you see me doing, I put it down first and it's going to make that red still visible but a little more subtle. So if you don't want it so in your face, then I would do it a little bit more subtle so then you're putting your layers of green on top of it and it's not as prevalent but it is still there enough to add interest. So with that said, let's go back to these greens that we're talking about. So my pears are a yellow green. That's what I chose to color them in. Then for the leaves, I didn't want everything to look the same. So I still used a couple of yellow greens, but they're more on the blue side. And you can see that as I'm laying them down. And then the shading is going to be true greens from the green family. I used a G19, G28, G29. Um, and just having that little bit of color differentiation is going to make it so everything is not just one same color and not um, interesting to look at. If you have limited markers, okay, um, which is fine, you can still do this. I would just use a little bit of color glazing. So let's say you only have the green greens. When you're coloring the pears, at the end of it, go over it with a wash of yellow, like a YO2. Um, a YO8 might be a little bit strong. Try a YO2. If you only have the yellow greens and you want to create the green greens, when you're done coloring it, go over it with a wash of blue, maybe a BOO, a BO2, and it will change the tone of the color and make them a, a different shade so that they don't all look the same. Now, let's talk about why I did the watercolor wash in the background. Why I did the watercolor wash in the background is watercolors and the you have to build up layers with watercolors because they are transparent. So you just keep layering upon layering until you get the look that you're going for. Copic markers are also transparent. And so I'm kind of faking the look that I want by using the Copics. Now you could definitely use less Copics. You don't have to color the whole image. And in fact, I'll have a video um, probably next week where I did kind of the same thing with the watercolor in the background, but I only used two Copic markers to shade to just add shading and kind of let the watercolor shine. So if you're interested in that, uh, stay tuned. Um, but for this one, it's giving me an under layer of color that I can build on. So for these pomegranates, my highlight isn't white, white. My highlight is a little bit yellow because you can see that watercolor through it. You can also see, and it's hard in the photo, I know that, um, you can also see the pattern that the watercolor created shining through the Copic coloring, especially where the lighter colors are concerned. For this pomegranate branch, just something to note, um, I'm pretty sure the bottom two are supposed to be leaves and not flowers. I took some creative liberties. I'm not sorry about it. Just to get a little bit more red in there um, because I did have so much green. Now, since I didn't get the stamping great, which was by my own doing, I am going to go in and outline the images. Normally, I go in with like a 0.25 or a 0.35. Nah, nah. This time, we went in with a big guy. We went in with a 0.45, which does make 
the line a little bit thicker, but it was enough to connect my double stamping so it's not noticeable at all. At this point, all of my coloring is done. I'm going to line up my die um, to die cut that as well as stamp my sentiment and die cut that as well. So this video, I'm like 10 minutes into this video. I haven't even talked about the blog hop. This video is part of a blog hop. Yeah, prizes. Um, and Pink Fresh is always very generous and they are giving away uh, 10 $25 gift cards to random commenters along the hop. So I will link that below if you're watching on YouTube so you can go over, hop along for your chance to win. Um, I mean, 10's a lot, so you got pretty good chances. But yeah, so our this is actually our vacation week. Um, we have been fitting in lots of things, which is amazing. Um, swimmings and um, today, well, uh, and I'll tell the story another time because I don't want to. I don't want to sell the story short. But we have been doing things. We did have a little bit of a wrench thrown in the plan, um, which is okay you know, life happens and Eric's cousin, um, passed away. Um, so now in addition to the other, you know, like the fun family things, we are also going to be fitting in the, um, wake and the funeral. Uh, so it, he, he had cancer. He was sick for, um, a long time. And, and for the last little while he hasn't been himself. Um, so while it is very sad, we are very grateful that he's not suffering anymore. Um, so like I said, that's just, sometimes you just have to be adaptable. That's life. You know, life, life is adapting to different things that, um, you know, end up on your plate. So here for the background, I really love the dainty plaid, but I didn't really want anything competing with the coloring that I had. Um, so I decided that I was going to do the plaid white on white just to add some texture. I did use my sticky mat, um, my misty sticky mat. And I don't know if it's just because I've never used that one before. And so it was super extra sticky, but it did kind of create this curl to my card stock. I had to hunt down my uh, tweezers. You like that? I just, because I thought I was going to hold it with my fingers on top of the pattern that I just stepped edge to edge, right? Why? Why did I think that? Not sure. But I found the tweezers and all was well. Um, and so I just, I wanted to add the texture in the background. I wasn't, 100% thrilled that it kind of curled my cardstock, but that's not something that's never happened to me before. Obviously, I heat emboss uh, pretty regularly, and any kind of heat does, you know, warp your paper if you're not careful. So I have a little trick of just rolling it. So once it's all done and melted and um, it's all good, once it's cooled off, I'm just going to roll it, like kind of bend it and roll it the opposite direction of how it is bent and it will flatten out a little bit. To build this card, I just glued the images down flat onto a smaller piece of white cardstock and then I popped that up on foam over the embossed piece. Um really just love these. And I cannot wait to try to watercolor this because um, I think it'll be beautiful. I think this will be a great set for fall and for Christmas, Christmas pears. That's a thing. Um, so yeah, just super pretty. There's another, um, there's some fall foliage that came out with this release as well that I can't wait to use because I love, I don't love fall because you know I love summer. I love the heat. Today it's like 70 outside and rainy and I am literally dressed for winter in my house. I have on my slippers, my winter socks, a pair of a um, little bit thicker sweatpants, a t-shirt and a sweatshirt inside my own home. That is true facts. And my husband went to Costco because um, he's fantastic to get like diapers and wipes and, and all these things that we have to stock up on. And I was fully prepared for him to make commentary about how I was dressed for the North Pole um, in July. And I'm, it is what it is. I just, this is who I am. I have to accept that. I run cold <laughs> and I like the heat. Um, so... Yeah, this has really been the only like yicky weather day that we've had on our vacation, so I can't complain too much. We are going to take the um, kids tonight to, I was telling you guys before, that arcade. Um, today, we knew today was going to be our rainy day, and so we had planned on doing that um, today. So that, that part was completely normal. Here's me bending and rolling, so you get it to lay a little flatter. 
Then obviously once I attach this card front to a card base, it should lay perfectly flat. If you have any issues with it not laying perfectly flat, I would recommend I usually just put mine um, under some heavy books for, you know, just a little bit and it, it'll flatten out. So here, just doing a couple little dots of white in the flower for the center. And then I'm just going to go in and around some highlight areas, add a little bit of glitter. I did, uh, one of my followers had asked me if I would show in the video, like turn it so she could see where the glitter is. I tried. I tried. I don't even know if you can see it. I tried to show you. <laughs> so um, if you head over to the blog, there's some still photos. You might be able to see that better. But uh, I appreciate you guys spending your time with me and thank you for visiting and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.